Okay, so the ion thruster you just saw, I'm just going to run it up on the bench here. So candles over there. So your tea light. See, it's uh, it looks nice. This one. Quite pleased with the aesthetics. Let's just turn him on. You can see that candle doesn't like that at all. That's nearly blowing that out at uh, 30 centimetres. And we'll turn it off again. And you can see the candle comes back to normal life again. Just do that once more from the front. It's always difficult when you've got to press the buttons yourself. Supply on, and you can see trying to blow that out as hard as it possibly can. Doesn't backfire this one, which I quite like. So nice, uh, clean ionic wind. Don't want to get the camera too close in case it shorts the camera and blows all the circuit board up. But as you can see, there's no. Uh, no, nasty discharge there at all, really, really clean, really quiet. I mean, you're closer than I am. So a pretty little engine, that one. So in the end there, that's the bottom of a soda can, with the top of the soda can cut off, because I like the shape of that, pushed in. No real rhyme or reason to the design, apart from you have to make sure that you've got the high charge density on the release side, and a low charge density on the receive side and uh, lo and behold your drive will work See those spikes on the anode of the cathode, I don't know which it is, it doesn't make any difference really. Um, but they're causing the uh, high charge density. And if you look on the front there, the uh, receiving side, the larger side, is going to have a lower charge density and the, and the sides are nicely curved. Which means there's no sharp discharge points, which is important for an ion thruster on the, re on the receiving side. Okay, like that, bye for now.